So today I want to talk about street smarts. I think there's a big misconception about street smarts. I think people think that you have to be literally in the streets to have this intelligence or a certain secret language that people talk or you know just have this ability to know certain things without having experienced it. And that's not really what it means. Street smarts is more so about understanding human behavior and human psychology and understanding the environment that you're around and being able to adapt to it you know, as you see fit. So in this video, I wanted to cover a couple of sort of street smart tactics, if you will, that I've learned. I'm probably gonna end up breaking this video down into multiple different parts because there's a lot to go over and I don't really wanna put it all into one video. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is a lie can get across the world twice before the truth can get out the door. We see it every single day, whether it's on social media, the workplace, all these different environments. Some people will spread rumors that are, are entirely false in order to get a reaction out of people, in order to gain sympathy or praise or you know the whole nine. And a lot of the times, the truth doesn't even matter. It's only about what they wanna believe. So sometimes you'll see people just accuse somebody of something to get back at them or get revenge. And even though it's completely false, a lot of people will believe it. And it's unfortunate, but sometimes that's the way it is. It's really hard to clear your name when somebody does that. So it's important to understand that rule. You'll even get those times where the lie sounds so ridiculous that it's not even believable. And people who are wired like that will just try to throw things at the wall to see what will stick. It's just the way it is, I guess. All right, let's move on to number two. And that's the fact that different points of view will always exist. Everybody is not gonna think like you. Everybody's not gonna react to things the same way you do. People are not going to um, live the same way you do. And I think once we recognize those differences in others, I think we'll be able to move forward a lot easier. And I'm not just talking about in terms of, you know, everybody coming together in this kumbaya type of way. I'm just talking about you as an individual. When you're approaching other people or getting engaged in different situations, if you don't understand how other people think, you're gonna get blindsided and surprised a lot of the time. So being able to understand how other people think around you will allow you to sort of you know, mitigate and um, prepare yourself for what's coming. It becomes even easier to make predictions and understand that your way is not the only way. You know, a great way to think about this is in competitive sports. When you play sports or do anything within competition, you don't study yourself to get better. You're studying your opponent. So it's the same way in life. You have to study how other people think because you already know how you're going to react to a situation, usually, right? But you don't know how other people are going to react. And so it's important to understand and pick up on certain cues and certain um, phrases and certain words they use, body language, things like that. So, so I'll move on to number three, which is assumptions and judgments are constantly being made, whether it's about you, other people, the things around you, people, places, things, yada, yada. Assumptions are always being made. Unfortunately, it's the truth. You know, when we go through life dealing with different situations, we see different people, we meet different people, a lot of the times we're trying to compare it to something we've seen before or experienced before, right? It's almost a default thing. You know, we do this all the time. We categorize people. We say some people are athletic guys. We say some people are high fashion women. We say some people are couch potatoes. We see <laughs> a lot of times we'll just look at people and we put them in certain categories. And like it or not, when people meet you, they're putting you in a category too. And this is where a lot of like misconceptions and false assumptions are made about people, but it's not something you can control. Some people will look at you and say that you date a certain type of person, you live a certain lifestyle, you go certain places without you ever even saying a word. So, you know, don't worry about it. But also you can use this to your advantage, right? This is why sometimes you can just tell when somebody is trying to be somebody who they're not. So it goes both ways. You can use it to your advantage. You can learn from it. Well, it's important to understand that this is what happens. Okay, our next one is the fact that you have to be willing to embrace failure and take a lot of L's, a lot of losses in life. Okay, if you wanna advance in life and do well, 
you're gonna have to fail. You're gonna have to struggle. You're gonna have to have obstacles to get over, right? And I think failure, a lot of the times, people misunderstand it. Failure is necessarily you hitting a wall and then falling down and never getting up again. Failure is basically saying, you've gotten to a wall, and you're trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way to get over it? Can I climb over it? Can I go around it? Can I go under it? So it's a way to learn how to maneuver your obstacles. It's the same way, let's say if you're a person who plays video games, right? Even the toughest levels, people can pass them. You know why? Because they might go through the first time, they'll try to go through, make a jump, and they miss it and fall down. Well, guess what? The next life, they come back in, they adjust the way they jump, and you know, they get past that gap, and they keep it moving. And even though they'll fail a couple times, every single time they restart, they'll get further and further and further. It's the same way you have to approach life. Anytime you're struggling or hitting a wall, that's where a lot of people give up, but you can't give up. You have to figure out a way to get past it. I think that's one of the most important things about understanding in life. And honestly, I could put this at the number one spot. Embracing failure is a powerful thing. Okay, our next one is the fact that marketing is way more powerful than you think it is. Okay, I'm not gonna go too much in depth with this one because I want to actually do a video on it eventually. But marketing is crazy because it's so simple. If you put something in front of somebody enough times, they're eventually gonna make a decision on it. Either they hate it or they love it. But many people do use this fact to their advantage negatively, unfortunately, again. So a lot of times you'll see it on social media. People will just make things up. They'll just make it up and spread it around. Misinformation, alternative facts, you know, whatever they call those things nowadays, people just do it. You know, you could go online, make up a statistic about something that's completely false, and people will share it. If it gets enough shares, people will start taking it and running with it. And it could be completely untrue, but they don't realize it. The lie has spread so far that it's hard to kind of reel it back in. So yeah, I think it's important to understand that marketing, once again, is a very powerful thing. And once you get that, you'll be able to know when you're being sold to, when somebody's trying to persuade you to do something. All right, my next one is less so about psychology and more about um, your presence. So some people don't understand this, but like being the toughest guy in the room is usually not the position you wanna have. When people start identifying you as a tough guy in the room, they start to almost wanna challenge you when it comes to certain things. You become put on a pedestal in a certain way and people start looking at you in a way that's like, okay, is this guy really what he's about? They wanna see if they can respect you. But it's not even just that. Some people will take toughness to a different level. They just wanna be hard-headed about things. They don't listen to other people. They don't take other um, scenarios or facts into account. They just kind of go with the way they want to do things. And when people are hard-headed, it really frustrates me because they could save so much time and energy and effort by just listening sometimes, but some people just don't do it. It's important to understand that being the toughest guy or being the most hard-headed person in the room doesn't get you very far. You have to be willing to be flexible. You know, bend but don't break, as they say. Okay, and finally, my last one is it's usually better to keep a low profile when it comes to things. I'm talking financially, the way you think, the way you approach things. As I pointed out before, you know, people are constantly making assumptions and judgments about people all the time. So I think one of the biggest things is that keeping a low profile will protect you from you know, people who are trying to get over on you or get things from you. Because we do have that, that class of people who, when they hear somebody has a lot of things, they want to figure out how to get it. This is also goes with the idea that we need to be aware of our surroundings and who we have around us. If you're in a place that has like low income, lots of poverty, um, lots of people struggling, it's probably not the best idea to be walking around with watches on or nice shoes or nice clothes because there are places in this world where people will literally just walk right up to you and snatch things off of you and keep it moving because they're just bold like that. And they'll do it in broad daylight just because they want to. But that goes with keeping a low profile. You should always be aware of your surroundings, who you're around, where you're at. Your environment definitely plays a factor in these things. I don't know, I think it's a weird thing, but it's something to keep in mind though. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you today. 
I think that was like six or seven uh, street smart things that I wanted to share with y'all. But yeah, these are definitely things that you should keep in mind, understand, or even study to learn more about, um, even outside of my videos that I share. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like below, leave a comment, share your thoughts, follow me on my socials at LeanBuff, and subscribe for more.